Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girlfriend Yolungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day so if there is something that you guys want us to react to let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below and we'll do it for you um you can check out our second youtube channel called funny and jesse 2.0 head there subscribe and enjoy our weekly content we've got a podcast called diving in with funny and jesse you can find us on itunes spotify podbean this channel or our second youtube channel and we've got a patreon you guys feel free to become members and we'll appreciate a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, everything that you're doing. And a big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today we're going to be reacting to why Muhammad marries so many wives. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. I don't understand what the big deal is when we today are saying, look, oh, we should be accepting of LGBTQ. We should be accepting of this. You know, if a man and a man love each other, a woman and a woman love each other, what's wrong with that? You know, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with... And fine. But what's wrong with plural relationships? You know, why can you be... Why, why, where societies accept them, wherever people accept them. Now, somebody may say, well, I don't accept that. Well, don't accept it. Some people say, oh, look, the prophet was after... Oh, was he trying? Was he after women? In all honesty, seriously, the pro you know, in a day and age like the Prophet's time, which was a patriarchal society, and sex was like a very natural thing. It wasn't like a taboo. Even in our day and age, it's a taboo. It wasn't a taboo in their society. It was very natural, right? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if he was after women, he had innumerable he had so much access to to take that route people were offering him money women sovereignty Quraysh were offering him from the top we will offer you everything that look you just need to stop this dawa and I feel that that's a very unfair prejudiced um, a biased angle towards the Prophet just to kind of hate on him or attack him as people oh but why did he marry these women in most of the cases look in most of the cases when the Prophet Sallallahu married he married many people he married people women who were old he married I mean he himself was of age as well he married old women he saw that was very old arguably older than the Prophet uh, now you, you know he married he married other women that were kind of uh, destitute he married but it wasn't all I'm not saying there were always sympathy marriages I'm not saying that I'm not saying that at all the Prophet did like people and they liked him and they were in a culture that accepted plural relationships now I don't understand what the big deal is when we today are saying look oh we should be accepting of LGBTQ we should be accepting of this you know if a man and a man love each other a woman and a woman love each other what's wrong with that you know what's wrong with this what's wrong with and fine but what's wrong with plural relationships you know why can you be why why where societies accept them wherever people accept them now somebody may say well i don't accept that well don't accept it now nobody's telling you to be a part of it it's like saying oh just because i'm not gay well i don't accept the homosexual relationship well fine don't be a part of one <laughs> you know it's not a so just in these societies the irony that where we move towards so much liberation and liberating people, we become so judgmental on societies that accepted certain relationships. It's it's up to them. You know, if they if they accept it, they accept it. You know, the the Prophet gave his wives always a choice. In fact, it's a verse of the Quran that you know that you have Ya Nisa and Nabi. That if any of you wish to leave, just leave the Prophet. That you have no, there is no compulsion for them to stay. There was no, you know, it wasn't like, oh, they were being forced to stay and stuff like this. So just because our view of relationships today is, is very kind of usually, you know, one on one. That's our relationship understanding. Okay, fine. I'm not saying that's wrong. That's fine. That works. But what I'm trying to say is why be so judgmental against other people where that works? For them people today live in open relationships they're like don't worry about it. you know uh, uh, 
I'm with this person, but we're both in an open relationship, you know, we're chilling, you know, we're chilling in our free time. So the thing is that if, if that, you know, you can be very open to accepting even open relationships. So why hate on just something and say, oh, but the Prophet was a part of plural relationships and, uh, and he must have been misogynistic. Why? So, so I wanted to say that, look, and, and by the way, people don't need to accept him. I understand the fact that Muslim, non-Muslims obviously don't accept the Prophet. That's their choice. And they do not need to accept his ways. They do not need to accept his, but I just feel that they should be as objective as possible. That's, that's all I'm saying. It, it, it is not surprising that he would have had many wives, especially since he was a, a leader. And, and this is where a political and social aspect comes in. John Esposito, for example, in his book, Islam, The Straight Path, and Karen Armstrong in her book on, on the life of the Prophet Muhammad, have both um, stated plainly that Muhammad's marriages were largely for political and uh, social reasons. Mm -hmm. What are the, I mean you mentioned political and social, what does that mean? Does well that let's mean? think of the p political for, for first. Uh, in, up until the Middle Ages it was quite common for uh, alliances between states to be cemented by a, an intermarriage. Uh, a prince of one kingdom marries the princess from another kingdom and these kingdoms are brought together. And it becomes uh, enlar enlarged and more powerful. I exactly. Guess. And of course this uh, breaks down barriers and, and reduces the possibility of war between these kingdoms. Mm -hmm. and now when the, when the Islamic faith started out as a, a blossoming uh, tradition and with, with a new nascent uh, um, uh, group of people here, uh, this was seen to be a, a, like a tribe competing with all of the other tribes in, in the area. Muslims uh, 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 become now the target of many others who wanted to uh, decimate this population and wipe out this newfound faith. They saw it as a threat to their own uh, continuing traditions inherited from their forefathers. Now, a, a clever thing to do was to build alliances with all of these uh, various warring tribes. And uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did that. He entered into treaties and alliances to establish peace. But a greater level of that uh, alliance which was put on paper was to build family relations. And by the Prophet marrying into uh, one of these tribes, uh, he was actually cementing that relationship and creating goodwill because now the people of that tribe could think that one of our daughters is married to the Prophet, this great uh, new leader, and so we're attached to him and we're not at war with him anymore. Uh, so with this in mind, we can understand why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, married Safiya. Uh, who was the daughter of Hoyai, a people uh, with whom the Muslims had been at war. Uh, those people they were, were tribe, right? yes, and uh, they were defeated. Uh, uh, Sophia was captured, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, freed her and then gave her the option to marry him and uh, according to the Islamic tradition she decided to marry him. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a similar thing was done with uh, Juwairiya and Juwairiya was from the Banu Mustalik tribe. Uh, they were at war with the Muslims and when they were defeated Juwairiya was captured and uh, when the Prophet peace be upon him married her uh, the Muslims decided to free all of her uh, people who were uh, uh, captured in that, in that war. And uh, it is reported that Aisha said, I haven't seen a woman bringing more good to her people than Jawairiya did on the day that she got married to the Prophet, peace mm -hmm. be upon him. So, so uh, those are political reasons. Now, yes. let's move on to the social then. What were the social reasons for the Prophet Muhammad marrying? Uh, some of the women that he married. Yes. Uh, well, we, I can say more about political because it, uh, some other marriages fall under that category as well. But in terms of social, uh, we can look, for example, at his marriage to uh, uh, Sauda. Sauda was an elderly uh, woman. And uh, when the Prophet's first wife, Khadija, died, uh, there was no one really in the Prophet's household now to care for her, his young children. He had, uh, according to some reports, six children from his first marriage. Uh, some of them uh, died in infancy, the boys, but four daughters remained, and some of them were quite young, such as Fatima. And it would have been useful to have a motherly figure to take care of Fatima and, and the others. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, married Sauda, who was about 55 years old, and uh, that was a way of, uh, of keeping his household together. Um, the Prophet, peace be upon him, married some women who were uh, widows 
uh, after their husbands had fallen in battle defending this uh, early Muslim community from outside attacks. Mm. So for example, in the Battle of Badr, we have uh, some widows emerging. Uh, Hafsa was the daughter of Omar, the Prophet peace be upon him married her, and um, that was a way of taking care of the, of the widows whose husbands had fallen in battle defending the nascent community. Now, of course, in modern times, you may say that women are quite free and they, and they have uh, everything at their disposal, disposal and, and, and their leisure. They're educated, they're working, they have careers and so on, and uh, they may not need a husband. In, in those times, uh, women actually felt uh, unprotected uh, and, and uh, they, they needed uh, a, a male to take care of them and to provide for them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, by marrying Hafsa was doing that and fulfilling that role. Uh, in, in a similar uh, way, we have uh, another woman who was known as Ummul Masakin. The, um, she was uh, um, uh, the, known as the mother of the, of the poor people because she was so charitable to them. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, married her after her um, husband had uh, fallen in, in the Battle of Badr as well. Her mm -hmm. name was actually Umm Salma. So are there any, any marriages that the Prophet had that don't fit the mold of trying to fulfill political and social purposes? Well, his first marriage uh, was uh, known to be a, a normal sort of marriage, people meeting and, and getting married. He uh, was about 25 years old and he had been in the employ of a woman, uh, Khadija by name, uh, who was uh, known for her own purity and, and uh, her uh, chastity in, in that environment. Uh, uh, she was said in some traditions to be much older than, than he was, uh, but he nevertheless uh, got married to her. And uh, he remained uh, with her as his only wife until she finally died, and he was about 50 years old uh, at the time. Uh, which means that uh, though she was much older than he was, uh, it, nevertheless this was his only wife and, and, and he was quite satisfied with her. It's only after her death uh, that he began to marry more wives and, and that was when he was in a position uh, as a leader of the community and his uh, marriages would have served uh, these noble social and uh, political purposes that, that I've mentioned. Very, very interesting video. I guess uh, this is to answer that the video that I had uh, reacted to. Um, I mean, you have to respect people. This is what I'm saying. There's certain things in certain countries or continents that are acceptable that you may not agree with. But even if you, have, even if you disagree, nothing will change that. There's many things in this world that we don't agree with that people do. I may agree with it, you may not, but life still goes on. Why are we we're so, we're so quick to normalize things that are not so important in the world or push laws for things that don't make sense and forgetting the more important things in life? Otherwise, like I say, if you want to be... Um, if you want to be, if you want to marry many wives, do it. If you want to, if you don't, good for you as well. That's your choice. It's not, it's not for me to choose for you or not. And then I always criticize the West because I feel like they're cowards. Why normalize things? Actually, they're not just normalizing things in their countries. They're also trying to force laws, laws in other countries as well. This is what I don't agree with. I don't agree with someone. Because there is superpower, whatever the case is, for you to say, um, I think Zambia should do this, um, I think not. But otherwise, politics are messed up, everything is just messed up, which doesn't make sense. I thought, well, just, if Zambia is Zambia, let it be Zambia. If it's supposed to unite, then with other countries, let that be a time to, to unite. But otherwise, don't go disrespecting other people's... Um, be it culture, be it ways of living, you just can't do that. Otherwise, this was interesting. Hope you enjoyed it too. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.